What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 90. And we start today's episode off by looking at our fixtures for the month of September, our first month outside the transfer window, of course, the crazy transfer window. And as you can see, some big games coming in September. We've got two trips to Tuscany, as we take on Empoli and also Fiorentina both away from home. Juventus, the most dominant domestic side in Italian football over the past decade or so at the Stadio Olimpico. And we've got our opening two champions. League group games, the first one in today's episode away in Russia against Lokomotiv Moscow and of course the second one is we play host to Chelsea, the English side coming to take us on at the Stadio Olimpico. So yeah, some big games coming in the month of September both in Europe and in the league as well and after a thrilling transfer deadline day where we saw Patrick Cutrone leave to Liverpool and go to Anfield and then we signed Moise Keane directly afterwards for around the same fee plus of course the signing of Mancini as well. So much had happened over the course of the summer transfer window. Almost £400 million spent on rebuilding this Roma side, whilst also somehow, despite almost spending £400 million, making a profit on selling over 20 players in the summer window. Well, now we're outside the transfer window. The question is, how is our new look Roma team going to get on in the first half of the Serie A season? Well, to start off this game, absolutely terribly. Away at the, oh, in Tuscany, at Empoli for the first game of today's episode. My goodness, right from kickoff, Empoli stunned us and the cameraman couldn't believe it either. It was on a bloody heart attack, I think. Cross from the right hand side, whipped into the middle, and Burai heads it in as a youth player. New gen slash regen makes it 1 0, and this guy, oh my word, all I can say is 25 minutes in, I was thinking, how on earth did we miss this guy, lads? I mean, I was saying to my recruitment team, I was, on, I was on the phone to him, I was texting him during the game, I was saying, how do we miss this guy? I was saying to my scouts, how do we miss this guy? This guy's six foot six, he seems absolutely rapid and a clinical finisher as well. Heads the ball in, puts the second shot through the legs of Paolo Lopez and 26 minutes into the game, and Toninho Barai had bagged a brace as Empoli led by two goals to nil, heading in to the half. How on earth do we miss this guy right underneath our noses? Unbelievable. We should have spent the 400 million pound on this guy. 2-0 down to Empoli in the first half. And at half time as we walked to the pitch, I could hear boos. I could hear boos coming from the away fans. 400 million pounds spent and we're 2-0 down away against Empoli. So I said to the lads in the dressing room, sort it the fuck out. This is shambolic. And 10 minutes after the restart, we had half the deficit. Zaniolo getting on the end of a Moise Keen cross, making his debut. Lovely sprint and through ball by Keane there and Zaniolo with the finish makes it 2-1 and with 12 minutes to go still trailing by a goal Tony rolls through Moisa who drills it past the goalkeeper for a goal on his debut just like Ivan had away in Naples as we battle back from two goals down to get back on level terms courtesy of Moisa Keane's assist to Zaniolo and then his finish after Tony's through ball 2-2 the final score you see me celebrating on the sidelines it's paid over the cracks really only two wins in our first four games to start the campaign off very poor indeed but it's all perspective we were 2-0 down at the break it could have been much much worse and we have Moise Keane to thank for the reason we would leave at least a point but this lad here Antonino Barai he steals the champagne from Moise and all I'm saying is the first thing I did as soon as the game was finished was went to the player search screen and said I need to find out more about this guy I got a scout on him he shows great potential Bloody hell, he shows great footwork as well. Great header for the first goal and a brilliant finish for the second. But 2-2, two, uh, sorry, 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 two, two, the final score after training by two at the break. It's perspective, it's a draw. It's not an abysmal result. However, draws aren't going to cut it, especially against a side that we should be beating, especially after spending £400 million. Got to do much better than that, no doubt about it. And it's been, it's been a tough start to the season. You know, I'll be the first to admit it. Two wins in our first four games. That's, that's not good enough, man. When you spend the amount of money that we spend... Well, we've built the sort of side that we've got. Two wins in four? I mean, the ball wants to win a domestic double, for goodness sake. That's mid-table form, for goodness sake. We've got to sort it out. It's not good enough. So, for our second game of today's episode, travelling away from home to Lokomotiv Moscow in Russia, it was time for the Champions League group opener. So, heading into the game, on the back of that 2-2 draw, I made major changes to the lineup. Decided to stick with the formation, but made lots of alterations to our starting eleven. But 18 minutes in, this guy kept his place on the pitch. I was going to take him out. What an impressive debut from Moise Keane. 
team wearing a number 10. And yes, guys, I've seen the comments. I will be changing the numbers in the next episode. Don't worry about it. He will be taking the, He won't be uh, holding on to number 10. Uh, as of course, that is retired uh, due to Francesco Totti's brilliant with Roma. I will take the 10 off him in the next episode. But yeah, uh, wonderful header there by Moise Keane. That made it 1-0. And 22 minutes in, Orsolini made it 2-0. Getting on the end of an Ollie Shawcross, his first assist in a Roma shirt. As we would double our lead in the first half, we were playing some absolutely brilliant football. Knocking the ball around really nicely. And with 10 minutes to go in the first half, we get ourselves our third goal. Ivan Tony scoring his brace against Lazio in the Dami gets his first ever Champions League goal here. Getting on the end of the Cristante through ball and drilling it past the goalkeeper to make it locomotive Moscow nil, Roma three. And three goals up here in Russia in the first half. You know, with all due respect to this team, I think they probably will end up with a wooden spoon. You know, us, Sevilla, Chelsea and them, I think they probably will end up in fourth place. We did fancy our chance heading into the game, but after our poor domestic start, anything could have happened. This was the sort of response I wanted though. Putting fringe players into the starting eleven, giving them their chances and they were playing really well, as were the starters, Keane, uh, Tony and of course also Lini, the starters getting goals and all three in the first half. Sadly can answer the clean sheet though, still we only have one in our first four, uh, four out of five games. Uh, a bit unlucky with that goal there, Shaw's interception going straight back to a locomotive Moscow player and eventually the finish by Fedar Smolov. Sadly couldn't do that in my Cardiff save with uh, my football manager save last year. Makes it 3-1, but we will re restore our free goal cushion and it was another assist for Oli Shaw as well. Hadn't had a single assist in the Serie A so far, but a wonderful storm and run down left hand side, a perfect cross to the far post and there's Pina Monti off the bench at half time for Ivan Tony, getting his first goal in a Roma shirt, making it 4 1 and giving us our free goal lead back. So, Lokomoto Moscow 1, Roma 4. Sadly, they did once again cut the deficit to 2, and that was how the game would finish. 4-2 the final score, so great to get a big win there in our Champions League group open. It was a brilliant, dominant display. 11 shots, 8 on target, and 68% possession. Thoroughly deserved the three points on the group opener, but I mean, there were some worrying signs, no doubt about it. Two goals conceded, two sloppy goals conceded as well, as Shaw gets man the match in his best, uh, best performance so far in a Roma shirt. But again, poor defensive uh, performance there from us in that game. So concede those two sloppy goals there. And it is nice to start off with the win, but it is pretty evident to begin the campaign off. We don't have that many problems when going forward, but at the back, we are struggling quite a bit. We spent £76 million on Rob McNally. Well, at the moment, I must admit, he's not proven worth to be that price tag. Anyway, for the third and final game of today's episode, it's a live one as we welcome Juventus, the most dominant side in Italy in the past decade. The media believed after the money we spent this season and the arrival of me and the rebuild of Roma, we could be a serious threat to Juventus' crown last year. Last season, they were the domestic double winners. This year, we're expected to do that. Third and final game today, it's our first meeting between the two teams, Roma versus Juventus. Big win in Russia was much needed. However, after the start we've had domestically this season, this is a huge game here, so early on in the season. Not just because we're playing Juventus, and it's our second home game of the season, but with just two wins in our first four games. If it becomes two wins in five and perhaps two defeats in our first five as well, that's going to be a lot of concern for us. Some major red flags would already be getting waved around the Stadio Olimpico. And five minutes into this game, and I'm, I'm struggling right now already. Great ball inside by Orzabal. Paul Lopez with the save, and again. And what a double save by our interim captain. My goodness, Juventus, I thought for sure we're going in front. Give the Spaniard massive props. Incredible double save. And if it wasn't for our skipper, it would have been 1-0 Juve early. Five minutes in, already struggling. Here come Juve again. We are yet to get going in this game. We really have struggled to begin with. Rafael Leal, Bernadeschi, straight down the throat of the Spaniard as it's still goalless. But honestly, man, we, we should be a goal down. I cannot believe Lopez pulled off those heroics there. Fantastic double save. Looking for another chance. He'd have played much better than us in the opening half an hour. We're, we're really yet to get out of our half sort of penned in our own half right now. Bernadeschi into Rafael Leo. Lovely turn. The shot blocked though. And now a chance for a break perhaps. Now we're not a counter-attacking team here with Roma. There's a golden chance here to do just that. Or Cellini finds Tony. And there's Moise Keane. And he's had a brilliant start. And this will be fitting if he gives the lead against the run of play. He should have done so. But Chesney denies the former Juve forward from giving us the lead. Oli Shaw getting a book in there for an earlier altercation I believe as it's still goalless, and that is our best chance of the game thus far. It's the only chance we've had in the game so far, saved by the polling goal, Chesney, as Keane has prevented his first goal for Roma here against his former side at Sadio Olimpico. Tonali's shot blocked, Juve will clear, still 0-0. Osterman over the top for Yazabal, who heads it on. It's a lovely header 
to Rafael Leal. And oh, Paul Lopez again with a really good save. Low down to his left hand side, pushed it behind for a corner as we're still deadlocked here. But it's, it's been Juve's half. We've had one chance through Moise Keen, which was well saved by Chesney. Shorted really well there. Fair play to Oli now. As Diaz does get him behind the, 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 the fullback. This is what I want to see. Diaz away. He's got so much pace, Diaz. He's absolutely rapid. And he's in behind Casemiro. He's got options arriving. He'll peg it. Oh! I was going to say, he'll peg it back to Orsolini on the edge. Huge interception. Was that Rafael Varane or possibly Casemiro there? Tonali. He's going to have a go from range. Fires it wide. Still 0-0. That was the chance. Just didn't get the through ball right. We are into stoppage time here at the Stadio Olimpico. And there is a free kick for Juventus. And Rafael Varane is going to take it. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. As the centre half chips it into the middle. Lopez does well to palm it away. Gets back to his feet. And the danger not over yet. Pjanic tackled though. And that should do it. And as Sandro needs a counter-attack, we get some bodies forward here. Sandro. Orsolini. Over the top for Zaniolo. Oh, penalty, 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 surely penalty. Zaniolo taking that one. Costa out on a spot kick at the death. No doubt about it. Costa man diving in from behind. I don't think it'll be a booking, but it's definitely a spot kick. Now he won a lot of the ball, but only through coming through Zaniolo. Surely, oh, absolutely. From behind, takes him down before he wins the ball and makes contact. And that's a definite spot kick, but Tony is off. So Moise Keane is going to take it. Moise Keane, who scored on his debut against Chesney to win the game with the final kick of the match. It's Moise. Oh, he's in the crossbar. He's in the crossbar. Rude Van Nistelrooy style. Keane hits the frame of the goal. And Juventus escape with the final kick of the match. Oh, the drama at the Stadio Olimpico. And we failed to get that ball in the back of the net with a final kick. Oh, the drama. Sadly, there was no match highlight for it. How annoying is that? The most dramatic moment of the game and there's no match highlight. But either way, a goal is draw in the end. And that does mean that to start the campaign off, well, the struggles do continue for Roma. Almost £400 million spent on 12 new players. And as you can see, after five games, we sit in 10th place. Inter are the red-hot form side to start off with, with five wins in five. They're 100%, 13 goals on the board, and none conceded thus far. Milan are right behind them with 12. Last year's winners, Juve, are in third and still undefeated. But for Roma... A tough start to life with me in charge of the Stadio Olimpico. Just the two wins in our first five games. And already in these first five games, we've had two games where we've failed to score as well. Things we'll need to pick up if we're to win the domestic double like the board are asking for. So that will today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon, where we'll take on Chelsea in the second game of our Champions League group stage. See you for it then.